the Half-Life Alpha is more than just a playable game. It's a time capsule. There are a bunch of files on the disc that I haven't mentioned in other parts. Like documents, old drivers, a multiplayer map, and some rad videos. As you might imagine, this part isn't going to be that long. I'm going to keep it short, snappy, and totally not awkward. Uh, what? Oh, the music stopped. Yeah, let me fix that really quick. Uh, okay, um, well, I, I guess that part failed. <laughs> uh. The multiplayer map. The map Whereas DM is the only included multiplayer map in the alpha. I know this because it has a DM suffix on the end of the map name, something Valve actually doesn't use in the final game. As avid Half-Life players will probably see, this is basically an early version of the Stalkyard map. Now this is pretty cool to see, because not a lot changed design-wise. It got a rather basic visual overhaul, and letters instead of vents to get up this platform. It also has ammo and weapons lying around the place, something the alpha version lacked. Ah, uh, look, a classic HEV suit charger. Uh, or so I think. Stockyard shows really well how Valve's mapping got better over time as they gained more skill with the software they were using. In this case, that was Worldcraft. Oh, we got a pretty nice segue over here. Woo! Worldcraft. Valve needed a good level editor to be able to make Half-Life possible. But instead of programming their own software, they reached out to Ben Morris, an independent programmer who had a functioning level editor called The Forge. Valve acquired it, called it Worldcraft, and they started adding on top of it. Worldcraft eventually shipped on the retail CD of Half-Life back in 1998, enabling many legendary mods to be created. But we're not looking at that version. We're going to look at the alpha- uh, Oh, what? It works? But how? Last time I tried it out, it didn't even boot. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, I fixed it. Uh... You see, my memory is temporarily damaged a bit. I had a mission where I fell in a, some sort of reactor. Well, you needed to be there. Anyway, should be temporary. So this version of Worldcraft basically sucks. I've used it for a few minutes and I'm already getting a headache. The controls are awkward, the 3D view is completely fuck-faced, and the compiler kept nagging about Prospero not being there. Well, of course Prospero isn't there, Valve never finished it, dingus. I'm not going to go any further in Worldcraft, as there isn't much that I can show you. It's just an early alpha version of Hammer. Besides, if it isn't working properly, and I can't show you a playable custom map, what's the point? Miscellaneous software and drivers. Now this is a real time capsule. There are loads of different pieces of software in here, from classic DirectX drivers, to a very early version of Paint Shop Pro, and even a version of WinZip from 1997. I didn't try to install any of these programs or drivers. I'm too scared the drivers might conflict with my current ones, breaking my OpenGL again. Those damn NVIDIA drivers. But if you want to try them out, go ahead. Nothing is stopping you, except my guts. But do it on your own risk. Don't come to me if the voodoo drivers turned your PC into a gigantic mechanical wizard, turning your whole family into Tommy Wiseau. I did not hit her, it's not true, it's bullshit, I did not hit her, I did not. A oh, hi Mark. Documentation. Now here is some interesting stuff. The alpha contains some corporate backgrounders, employee bios, and nifty technology overviews. Reading these docs will learn you a lot about Valve and how it was at the time. Did you know, for example, that Kelly Bailey, Half-Life's composer, doesn't shave very often? Or that Randy Lundin, Half-Life's graphical designer, was a key employee at a potato processing plant? He had to make sure that the potatoes were peeled with quality. Other documents include a whole engine overview of all features that were in Valve's game engine like improved 16-bit rendering, advanced AI techniques, and seamless level loads. There is also a story synopsis and a full walkthrough that you can use when you get stuck somewhere. Hmm, I wonder if it might have come in handy when I played through the levels a week ago. <sighs> 
There are also a few videos available for you to watch, like a trailer and two short soldier demos showing that you can damage them. Uh, well, gee golly, thanks, Valve. So there you have it. Three parts getting into the gritty alpha of Half-Life. I can't wait to get into newer stuff. I mean, this alpha has me missing modern games a little bit. So it'll be a blast getting back into those now. There might still be stuff that I missed. I might make a follow-up episode in the future. So if there is anything you'd like me to add or look into, don't be afraid to ask. Now let's get into some awesome new stuff. I got an announcement soon, some of you guys might like. This channel is going to be a wild ride for me. Will you be joining me on it? Would be awesome. After all, we're not that different. Stalk... Stop... St uh, <laughs> I can't say it... They reached out to Ben Morris, an independent programmer who had a functioning level editor called The Forge. Valve acquired it... Go... 